there have been a lot of questions about his story. And I think we'll be able to clear up some common misconceptions along the way and get us off to a good start here. So, Kevin, I think what I'm going to do, since you are the expert here, I'll tee up the questions and you can just answer them. What is a data historian? That is the right question to start with here, I think. So if we take a look at what a data historian traditionally has been and traditionally has been thought of, that's been a tag historian specifically. So storing tag values, doing compression behind the scenes, doing interpolation when retrieving those values, uh, and configurable pull and storage rates. And if you take a look a bit more recently over the last uh, handful of years, and maybe maybe even the last decade or two, there's been another feature that's been added to what most folks think of as a historian, uh, which is event-based data. So being able to collect individual moments in time, take snap snapshots of what's happening at different moments, um, take history of runs of products or individual, you know, when when some schedule kicks on or kicks off, if you have a pump out cycle and you're in water, wastewater, or, you know, pick your industry, there are going to be events that need to be tracked in most cases. And those events uh, are now kind of under that data historian umbrella as well when most folks think of a data historian. To the next question. But you can't do tag history with SQL databases, right? Well, <laughs> you know, that's uh, it's funny because we've gotten that question so many times. The truth of the matter is we have thousands of customers in over 100 countries around the world all using our tag historian going to SQL databases. You know, there are projects with millions of tags. There are customers with years and years of historical data. Um, and at this point, decades of historical data. Uh, so I think a proof point there is, yes, you can use SQL databases uh, as the tag historian backend. Well, then why have I heard that SQL databases aren't good for historians? I'd, I'd take a look at where that message is coming from. Uh, we have some benchmarks and things that we're going to take a look at later. Uh, and there's certainly... Uh, some information to dig into in terms of throughputs that you can expect. But for your typical application going up to often millions of tags, SQL databases can be the right choice or, and in fact, are a fantastic choice as a historian. All right, so now you got me a little intrigued here. Tell me, what can the ignition historian do? Yeah, so 3 million streaming tags per database uh, if you're looking at a 10 second rate and 10% of tags changing, the numbers that really matter here are the number of tag changes per second. Uh, we have a companion document that you can download from our website that has a lot of these. You can certainly take a look at that document uh, and get some guidance on what those benchmarks are there. But a typical system, uh, 10 second rate and 10% of tags changing is pretty typical for a lot of applications. Some industries, you have to have faster rates than that, or you have larger percentages of tags changing. So that number scales. That number is per database in this case. So you can have multiple databases as well that all work together. Ignition allows for that type of scaling pretty easily. You know, if you're talking about the details of the throughput and storage, uh, there's a number of factors, as I mentioned, but things like the actual drive that it's stored on, um, solid state storage versus uh, spinning mechanical HDD, traditional type of storage, the uh, memory on a system, processing power, things like that, all come into a, a play in terms of the amount that'll go through for an individual database. And with multiple databases, they, that can scale, obviously, uh, much higher than a single database. So what are the advantages of SQL over traditional data historians? So one of the major advantages is that the data is accessible. A lot of traditional data historians have it locked away in a specific format that needs to be retrieved or accessed using the tools from those historians, uh, or it needs to be exported before it can be read by external software. Ignition, we do have methods to do that through Ignition and often we'll recommend going through those methods uh, if you want to use data crossing partitions and 
with some other considerations inside Ignition's historian. However, with the tag historian, that data format is completely open. It's well documented. Uh, it's inside our user manual that you'll see information about all the fields. There's no proprietary lockdown of that data in any way. It also is a standard technology, SQL databases in general, whether it's Microsoft SQL Server, Postgres, uh, MySQL, uh, whatever it happens to be, that's a standard technology that the IT departments are generally really familiar with and often plug directly into an IT uh, department's existing infrastructure. So spinning up an additional database or using an existing database as that storage medium behind the scenes is often an easier ask than spinning up separate individual systems that have uh, appropriate am amounts of storage available that are just for a historian backend in a proprietary format. Uh, and then also one nice thing that it allows you to do is leverage existing backup and archiving tools. You don't have to have a set of separate archiving tools or separate tools that are related specifically to the historian for data export or data, data management for disaster recovery, for backup processes. Uh, that can generally plug right into an IT department's existing plans for that and be and leverage some of those same technologies. Well, that clearly makes it uh, the case that the data is there and the data is available. So the next question is, what can I do with that data after it's in since tag historian? Sure, sure. So pretty much anything you want to. So dashboarding, reporting are very common, ad hoc trending, um, and a lot of folks don't necessarily realize that it's relatively easy to stream the data uh, to certain enterprise data systems. So for example, there's an Azure and AWS uh, injector modules that are available that you can purchase from inductive automation. Those are serious link modules and those, are, um, those can plug right into the tag system and stream data, historical data up to a central location. You can set up RESTful interfaces that are going to allow for querying of arbitrary uh, time periods. And so you can connect uh, pretty much any modern software system up to Ignition's historian uh, over REST uh, if you're using that to uh, get connected there. Um, that's generally over web dev or the web services module that that connects through. Uh, and then, of course, you can send data out however you want. In addition to that, with exports, with screen access to dashboards and and exports from those dashboards. Uh, as mentioned, reporting can be uh, pulling those pieces up and then sending them out to other places as well. Uh, and then you can also, if you want to get really fancy, um, go and tie into our SDK, uh, develop a module and get to some of the low level things inside Ignition directly. If you want to create a completely separate new technology that is either leveraging it or even storing some history into your own type of formats there through the tag story. What about scaling? I mentioned it before, but multi-database architectures are simple, easy to set up. Uh, we have the gateway network, which allows for them to be communicated over from one server or from multiple servers. And distributed architectures, are a possibility here. So if you have the single central historian scaling, this would be multiple databases if you're just taking a look at that central system. If we take a look at the next slide here, the distributed historian would be having the data split up to multiple different locations where you might have data at each one of the sites and then summary data comes back up to central, but central doesn't need to store all the information that's stored in the sites. And the gateway network allows for the querying over the remote connections. If you do want to report or have dashboards, centrally uh, real-time streaming that data from the gateways at the edge there at any one of the sites. And then we also have the next slide that I just added that is for remote data collectors. And the idea here is that you can take data and ship it through to a central ignition gateway with remote data collection boxes. Uh, any of these remote data collectors can be configured to do store and forward. So you're guaranteed not to lose data if a connection goes down and comes back up in the field. 
And these can be done either with ignition over the gateway network with MQTT over MQTT connected devices uh, from ignition edge to a central ignition gateway. Uh, and these are relatively lightweight communication mechanisms and a really nice way to allow you to have the data collection elsewhere and then have all of the data stored centrally if that's what you want to do. And I know you covered some of this, but what about plugging into other data storage? Sure. If you want to take Ignition's data, if you want to take Ignition's tag historian or the event history, history as well, but mainly the tag historian, if you want to take that data and you want to ship it to places other than SQL databases, or if you want to store it to places other than the internal database and SQL databases, we do have an open SDK that allows for creation of what we call a data sync and a tag history provider, data provider that will be able to be sent wherever you want it to. So it still runs through our logic. It still runs through our compression algorithms and um, identifies changes and has the same user interface for tags. Uh, there are no changes there. Uh, the module simply allows you to take the work that we're doing to get that compressed or uh, managed data stream, and then you can send it wherever you want to. The SDK is actual Java programming, and generally you want to be a programmer if you're going to use it. So what we've had is a number of third parties come and create modules uh, who have that program programming expertise and have put those modules into our module showcase and in other places. So for example, a company has created an influx database history provider. Uh, there are a number of cloud historian connections for different types of cloud historians. Um, there are a few others for, for other systems. And we have partnerships with Microsoft and AWS and Amazon. Uh, and their connectors uh, going up to both of those. And in fact, Microsoft with Azure has created a, an open source, completely open source available connector to the, the Azure Data Explorer ADX system there. Kevin, thank you so much. That's a very good primer and a good run through of a bunch of historian FAQs to really give us a little, little sense of where we're starting from in terms of the historian world.